Right, good morning, welcome to Vale Park. Um, this is the first time in the five years of ownership I've actually felt nervous at this football club, being overshadowed by two legends in their own right, and collectively, um, most probably one of the reasons why this stand still exists. To my right, is that my right? Yeah. We have, who are you? Please introduce yourself to the audience. Do I need to? No. Oh. Good morning to Neil and to Sir John, and to the CEO, Colin, and myself, Norman. Um, I'm delighted to say that after uh, discussions which started on Sunday and concluded last night, that we have Neil as our new first team manager. Um, I'd, I'd like to first explain that uh, Neil's frustration of being not considered for the job due to his reputation as a player, and on Saturday afternoon, after what was just another business display at Stevenage, Mickey Adams asked me a question because he was consulting me. Why is it I speak more about the person I don't want to appoint than the people I'm looking at to appoint? You should meet him. And so I met Neil and his beautiful wife at my house on Sunday afternoon for several hours, and um, that's translated into further discussions, which resulted in him being appointed as manager today. And uh, I'm delighted that he's actually come and joined us in what is a most der very difficult time, also with what it is historically... Uh, a big asset to this football club in the past. In addition to that, we have Sir John, who, um, again, as part of the Dream Team, I asked him would he consider to come in and help both Neil in his capacity as manager, myself as chairman, and liaise with us all, and hopefully bring the club together, because at the moment we are a seriously fragmented club, both on the pitch and off, and try and bring some of that past historical glory try and take us forward and I'm delighted to say that John has accepted that challenge um, and um, so with Colin you now look at what is now the new team to take Paul Vale forward. Are you going to add to that Colin? No I'm fine thank you. Take questions. Any questions? Was it uh, easy for you to appoint Neil in terms of, because obviously he was a slight doubt because of the worry of his legendary status here as a player and sometimes, you know, when pl former players come back and we've seen it in the past with Dean Glover, Martin Foyle, that, um, you know, his legendary past could sort of wane, if that's the word to use, Chairman. Well, that was his Achilles heel, because when his, first, his name first came up in 2014, I didn't even know who he was which I got seriously recommended by quite a few fans. So um, it is a massive responsibility for me to appoint him, and he overcame that objection several times on Sunday t to the point he's now sitting here. So it is um, a concern to me that I have a man's reputation in my hands, but he has his own reputation in his hands as to what he does going forward. And this person has the determination and professionalism and the commitment, something, and he's given up a role to come to a role. He wasn't a journeyman out of work. This man had a lot to lose, but has a lot more to gain, I believe, by coming back to one of the clubs he was actually a former hero to. It does help galvanise the club and the fan base, there's no denying that, but that will soon go. It's what he's doing on the pitch, week in, week out, with determining this has been what hopefully is a very good appointment. Neil, possibly one of your dream jobs, because I know you applied for it before, and you must be delighted to be coming back to a club that is dear to your heart in many ways, isn't it? I've never applied for the job before. Not even when you were? No, no. I've never applied for the job. It's always been a job that whenever it's, it's become available, of course I've always looked in, in hope that uh, I might be considered for the job, but no, I've never, never applied for the job. Um, but you don't spend... 10 years at, at a club and have the feeling I have for the club and not be interested in coming back and um, for me it's a, it's a risk for myself as well um, I know what football management is like obviously and um, but I'm willing to take that, that risk and I want to be here and I want the club to you know to um, get out of the situation it's in um, I know that will be it's uh, all jobs are difficult when you get put, uh, appointed as a manager, but um, I desperately want to do well and want the club to do well. You've done a long apprenticeship in the non-league. Has, has that served you well? I mean, you've had success down there as well. Has that served you well for to take that step on the ladder into football, England? 
I think it's a great apprenticeship because I've um, <laughs> I've managed at all levels of non-league. I've been part-time. I've worked. I've had all the difficulties in uh, overcoming that, and then moved to a higher level, and, and obviously work full-time as well in non-league football. So I think it is a really good apprenticeship. But um, I'm 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 not under any illusions. The reason that I'm here as well is because one. I played for the club, and that's obviously a factor. And the other factor is that I have managed for 13, 14 years. I don't think if I'd only played for the club, I wouldn't be sat here. And if I'd only managed in the non-league, I don't think I'd be sat here. But the combination of both, I feel that um, obviously that's why I've got the job. Everybody knows about your qualities, particularly the fans, the players who played with you and under you. Does your team just mirror you? You know, I know it's no quarter asked, no quarter given, and everything has to be 110% in work ethic. Is that what it, you're going to bring to the club now? I want, I, I think the minimum for any any footballer is commitment and work rate and effort. I think that has to be the, the number one priority of any player. But obviously you're only as good as the players you have on the pitch. Nobody's got a magic wand. Um, football's always about the players. Um, and like, uh, As I say, I've had different players throughout my, my career, some have gone on to to play at a much higher level and um, as I say, they've got different qualities, different players, but you like to see a team, as a, obviously as a manager, it, it wants to reflect yourself, but if you see that team given effort and commitment, then, then that's all you can ask as a manager. If you know they've given their all, regardless of the result, you can't predict results in football, you can't predict referees' decisions, but as long as that team out on the pitch gives 100% effort and commitment, you can't ask for any more. John, as his former manager, you know what this guy is all about. 110% commitment, and you know what he brings to on and off the pitch, don't you, in many, many ways. Um, and I suppose, looking at it from the outside, and you've been there, so he's done, he got the T-shirt, as to speak, um, he's a good choice, isn't he? He's a very good choice. I mean, uh, his dedication to the club was fantastic. He was a great um, ambassador, not only in playing the field, but also off the field as well. And uh, it's a great opportunity for him as well to, to come to Port Vale, which is, in my eyes, a fantastic club. Obviously, I've uh, managed uh, here for, well, I was here for 20 years. And obviously, it's a big part of my life and something that... Uh, um, I'm just pleased to try and see if I can help at this moment in time if things aren't probably going as well as they would like. And I think that um, Neil is a great, um, you know, it's a great appointment. And sort of he, he will give, I know what he'll give, like he used to give on the pitch, he'll give 100% to try and see if we can get ourselves up and running again. And starting, starting afresh, and that's also from, from everyone really. And I would like, you know, that's the supporters there now that so uh, Neil's here. I'm here to try and help him, give him a helping hand, and see whether we can start afresh and see whether we can get ourselves up and uh, in the you know, better reaches of the league and see whether we can start um, pushing the club back to, you know, to some sort of success. A big job, no hesitation. You've had big jobs when you first took over the role here, I remember well. Is, is it as big a job for Neil? as what it was for you when you first took over the management job? It's very, it's very so similar circumstances. We were in the bottom four of the, the, the fourth division then. Didn't want to uh, uh, have to apply for re-election. We managed to do it by one one goal. So it, it's, uh, it, it's a situation where at the moment in time uh, we're near in the bottom of the you know, reaches of, of, the, of the league and we've got to try and get ourselves up out, out of that as soon as we possibly can because... Uh, It'll be tough, and Neil will find it tough as well, and that's why I would try and see whether I could possibly help him in all aspects of the of the football side of the club. And it would be my pleasure, really, after being served here for 20 years. The supporters have been fantastic to me. You know, they kept me in a job many a time. You know, I mean, the many time a manager can be one match away from the sack, the supporters uh, kept me in a job. Uh, I would just ask them can they just give the same support to Neil at this time to, uh, and see whether they can, like we've got a game on Saturday, 
let's hope we can uh, we can generate quite a you know a, a good support for Saturday. I know that one or two will get a little bit of disillusioned uh, lately, but we we we're on a fresh we're on a fresh run, and hopefully we can sort of get the supporters to be back in Neil as well, and and see whether we can get uh, some of the good times to come back a little bit. A lifetime in football, John. No hesitation in taking the job when the chairman come and put it in front of you. Paul, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've not got much hair left now. I mean, me, 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 and, me and Neil are in the same same boat in that. But uh, yeah, um, no, I, really. I mean, the club means I've been, I've been fortunate. I've been I've been in football over 50 years, and the situation is that you know I've had 20 years here, 14 years at Stoke. So Stoke and Trent is is my hometown, and which I feel very proud of living here. But Port Vale is a club which obviously I'm um, so <coughs> so want to see to do well, and um, and sort of when when they're at the you know when the bottom reaches the league, obviously whatever I can do in whatever way would be a fantastic honour for me to to do that. Finally, for me, Colin, I mean you must be delighted now that you've got a team in place that uh, hopefully is going to climb the ladder. Then now, might you, and hopefully that consistency is going to come. Yeah, certainly. I, I think, um, you know, coming in from outside uh, of the area, you start and understand um, the legendary status that these two guys have. And um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to really just doing everything I can now um, with the staff that we've got here at the club um, to get behind them and give them the support that they need to, as John says and Neil said, to um, try and bring some successful times back to the club. Any other questions? Can't believe you're keeping your mouth shut, Lee. No, I can't. I just want to add this. The last statement I made was in uh, the beginning of May, where I said that um, because of what had gone on, I felt I should stand away, and I did. I wasn't involved with the club at all. I've come back because that route didn't work. One of the things that's clear to me, even the frustration of watching and listening from afar, was that you, to have a business like this, you have to have clear <coughs> leadership. And to own a football club, you also need to steer it. And so I've decided that um, what happened is past. There's a line been drawn. Uh, there will be uh, announcements regarding staff personnel changes today uh, in relation to the, the two guys who were actually on the pitch last night, which I'd like to personally thank them both. I couldn't get hold of them because of the press commitments last night to thank them for taking the steerage once um, I asked Michael to stem down because I understood originally they would actually go with Michael hence why I called Mickey Adams and asked him if they needed to would he stand in the technical area until such times we could find a replacement I did think Michael might uh, Mickey Adams wouldn't take that role but he said quite clearly he wouldn't uh, as being a manager or even an interim manager unless it was absolutely needed but um, he would help me go through a recruitment process I did narrow it down to three candidates of which Neil wasn't one of them on Saturday morning but because I'd spent so much time talking about him in a negative way in fact, Mickey Adams actually asked me to open my mind a little bit more instead of being blinkered because I didn't want to put the pressure on somebody who'd got such a important reputation in this football club to tarnish it by taking on what could be an impossible task well Sunday afternoon he had the floor and between, between Sunday and Monday night, he convinced me that he's the man for the job. It ticks lots of boxes externally, uh, but this is no easy fix and this is no easy appointment. And I think the fans, or the supporters, not fans, the true supporters of the club, you may have found different things to do on a Saturday, but hopefully to this Saturday you might want to come and support, if only for one game, two people who have got legendary status at this football club. If you get behind those two, and the players begin to see the true depth of support that this club has, maybe they'll actually start to perform like they should do as players instead of the fragmented approach we seem to be having at the moment, which puts us in the position where we are at the table. I'm delighted that I've pulled off this coup uh, with two guys with more hair than myself and with two guys who have got a wealth of experience. If they ever come to me for advice, then I know the club is really in trouble. So I'm absolutely delighted that we now have... Some, th 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 this is the first appointment where, in the last three managers where they actually have got substantial management pedigree 
in what is a very difficult tournament uh, place to be. So, um, as I say, Neil has got his own views. He's going to be appointing his own team, and that's happening as we speak. And you'll see his team in the dugout on Saturday. And you'll see his work ratio, ethic, commitment, dedication and drive from this afternoon onwards. And I'm delighted that both joined us. Thank you.